you get to Congress, is it going to be real? Are we actually going to be willing to defund IRS, FBI, and things of that nature? Well, I mean, we have to. I mean, we're at a point in our country now where we have a unregulated fourth branch of government that's targeting middle class Americans on a daily basis. I mean, it's unbelievable what we're seeing. You know, a lot of people have likened the situation that's going on right now as, you know, we're, they say we're in a banana republic. I think that's an insult uh, to banana republics across the country. I mean, at least the manager of Banana Republic, unlike our president, knows where he is and why he's there and what he's doing. I mean, we have a president right now that doesn't have that was Bo Hines. Bo Hines is the Republican nominee for North Carolina's 13th congressional district. And this individual is what you get when you order Madison Cawthorn from Wish.com. He's a little bit dumber than Madison Cawthorn, not by much, but their politics, they're about the same, roughly. Um, now, he's using a term that he's heard a lot lately, but very clearly didn't understand. And you know, you've heard this phrase being thrown around after Trump was raided by the FBI by Republicans who use that as definitive proof that we are indeed living in a banana republic, which also kind of confirms that they don't really know what that means as well. But he absolutely misunderstood what they were referring to when they used the phrase banana republic. So for those of you who don't know what that means, this is the definition of a banana republic. Banana Republic is an upscale clothing and accessories retailer owned by the American multinational corporation Gap Inc. Any questions? We have a president right now that doesn't have no, but in actuality, this is the definition of a banana republic. A small, poor country often reliant on a single export or limited resource governed by an authoritarian regime and characterized by corruption and economic exploitation by foreign corporations conspiring with local government officials. Now, emphasis on these types of countries being reliant on one particular resource. It's oftentimes known as the resource curse, although that usually refers to oil-rich countries like Venezuela and Nigeria. But in this instance, we actually are literally literally talking about bananas. Now, if you want the full story, I'd recommend Bananas by Peter Chapman, who details how the U.S. government brutalized Latin American workers at the behest of corporations like United Fruit, now known as Chiquita Bananas. Maybe you've heard of them. And they did this all so we can have access to Latin America's sweet, sweet bananas. Because why try to grow bananas in our colder climate in the United States when the bananas in the warmer climates in Latin American countries are much, much sweeter and more delicious? So delicious that the U.S. government was willing to do anything to get their hands on those bananas, get unlimited access to very cheap bananas. And when I say anything, I mean literally anything. So that's what a banana republic refers to, a regime propped up by the U.S. government to support the, the interests of American corporations. And one or a couple of government officials usually benefit from the spoils of that resource, and they have that incentive to stay in power. And even if they've lost the legitimacy of the people, well, they're propped up by the U.S. government, so they're essentially there in perpetuity unless there is a wide-scale revolt. So that's like the rundown. That's the broad, general you know, um, definition of a banana republic. But the story is much deeper. I would highly encourage you to read Peter Chapman's work because it is very, very informative on this particular uh, issue. But let me just get to the question that we're all thinking. Does this make Bo Hines dumb for saying uh, or thinking rather that Banana Republic refers to the clothing store? I would argue no. Look, it's it's arguably a gaffe. It's it's silly. It's a little bit shocking that somebody who is 26 years old running for Congress doesn't necessarily know what that refers to. But either way, I don't necessarily think it makes him dumb. It just kind of makes him look uninformed. It's comparable to the Aleppo moment by Gary Johnson when he was asked about Aleppo and what he'd do about it on MSNBC. And he said, what is Aleppo? When, I mean, if you're running for a position of power, especially where you'll be in control of foreign policy, you need to know these things. You need to know where Aleppo is. You don't need to know this, just the average viewer. But I mean, if you're running for Congress, I, I think you should know these things. But I won't say that this makes him inherently stupid. What makes Bo Hines inherently stupid is his politics. Now, if you want to know about him, I think... You can learn all you need to know in this short clip. If you get elected, are you going to join, uh, are you going to attempt to join the Freedom Caucus, Bo? Yes, I, I will certainly be in the Freedom Caucus. So in essence, he'd be another Marjorie Taylor Greene. Lovely. We definitely need more of her. So, you know, I don't necessarily think that he's stupid. I, I'm not going to call him stupid inherently so, but his politics are unquestionably stupid. 
I mean, when there are people like Marjorie Taylor Greene throwing around words like gazpacho, I can't say that anyone else is dumber until they give me more evidence. This is certainly, you know, evidence that he's uninformed about U.S. history and Latin American history and the way that we exploited them. But either way, I don't think it makes him stupid, just uninformed. But his politics, again, are deeply, deeply stupid. He's not only endorsed by insurrectionist Donald Trump, and he displays Trump's endorsement proudly on his website, but his policy positions, they're just pretty standard fascistic garb that we've seen from members of the Freedom Caucus or wannabe members of the Freedom Caucus. For example, every policy page links you to a donation, which is kind of weird. It seems like he's very desperate to milk his visitors for donations, and that's why he desperately wants you to get on his email list. But when you look at policies like, you know, um, traditions, he's a forced birther, he's against same-sex marriage, and if you get on his mailing list and you agree, then he definitely won't solicit more donations from you. He's also seemingly an election truther and in favor of more restrictions on voting, and if you agree, you can join his mailing list. And these are just some of his policies. He doesn't really have a fleshed out policy platform as you can see from his platform page there's just a couple of icons that hints towards you know broader MAGA adjacent priorities but there's a lot of contradictions here he's seemingly a populist or wants to be perceived as a populist so he talks about how term limits are good okay great agree and how corporations are bad but yet he's an unapologetic capitalist which is weird because if you believe that corporations are bad then being just a capitalist bootlicker doesn't really line up with that ideology, but it's not the only contradiction because as you saw in the beginning of the video where he was asked, can we really defund the FBI? And he said, we have to. Well, just five days ago, he tweeted out that funding the police was one of his main priorities if he's elected to Congress. So, I mean, you want to fund the police yet defund FBI. It's a bit of a contradictory view on law enforcement, is it not? So the overall you know, answer to, to the question is, no, I don't think that that gaffe makes him dumb, but his antiquated draconian policy positions definitely makes his policies dumb. And the fact that he's aligned with someone like Donald Trump and wants to be part of the Freedom Caucus, which is essentially the fascist wing who's vocal about their fascism of the Republican Party, you know, it goes to show you that dumb or not, this individual is dangerous and he must be defeated come November. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Wolf, moralists, wolf, moralists, wolf, moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.